Hey guys, I've got three news stories that I think are really, really interesting. I can't wait to talk to you about them. Stick with me. to all my sports card collector, investor, all my collectibles friends. I hope that everybody is having an amazing Tuesday morning. Should be coming out about 8.15 Eastern time. So hopefully everyone's got, gotten up, got their coffee and is ready to roll. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button, karate chop the notification bell as my son and daughter would say. We've got almost 500 videos on the channel. If you wanna peruse the archives, we've got a lot of different topics related to the hobby, sports cards, and also all types of collectibles and alternative investments. It's a good time. Let's go ahead and dig right into it. All right, first off, there's been a lot of talk about a Magic Johnson documentary, a lot of talk about it. And I've been kind of waiting for something like, when is this thing gonna happen? A lot of this has come from the excitement from The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary, the Chicago Bulls of the 90s documentary. And so there was kind of an announcement on the tail end of that, that there was gonna be a Magic Johnson type documentary in the works. And while I have not seen necessarily a documentary type, type show, I have seen that HBO is working on a drama series that is all about the Lakers of the 80s, the Showtime Lakers with Magic, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And it's really kind of detailing the Bus family, the ownership, and you know, Larry Bird is going to be in it. And it's a star-studded cast of characters. You've got John C. Riley as Jerry Buss. Jason Clark as Jerry West, Quincy Isaiah will play Magic Johnson, Solomon Hughes will be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Bo Burnham. Um, I've not heard of this actor before, but he's gonna play Larry Bird. I'm excited for this because the way that it's being talked about, it didn't sound like it was a limited series, meaning like three to five episodes of something, kind of a limited run. It almost kind of sounded like it was gonna be open-ended to where you could have multiple seasons of this thing. This, this could be like, you know, if, it, if it's good, and look, they've got a lot of great actors. Adam McKay is directing it. He's done a bunch of funny movies. Um, so it's an experienced producer and director that's gonna, that's gonna tackle this thing. Back, it's fourth down and 12. With the score, the Niners. Um, so I'm excited to see how that goes because it literally could be like multiple seasons. So it, it would carry on past just, you know, a three episode series or a five episode series. Now, granted, it's a drama series, so it's not it's not a documentary, um, you know, in the same way that that the last dance was with the actual players. But it is still kind of cool. It could have who knows, it could be like a Game of Thrones excitement type thing, where it really turns people on to what was going on in the 80s. It's being done by HBO. And they put on good stuff. Game of Thrones, I believe was an HBO deal. So my point is, is that could really be I mean, that could be multiple seasons. And that could be multiple seasons of excitement for those 80s, you know, vintage, you know, basketball players, it's not really vintage, but um, for the younger generations, it certainly is the 1980s. My daughter always jokes with me like, dad, you were born in the 1980s, like a hundred years ago. I'm like, okay, okay, calm down, calm down. But the point is for the younger generations, the 1980s was a, that's, that's a long time ago. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. I think with, I got something, something with, with our internet, when we just moved, we got free HBO Max or, or the HBO package for 12 months. So I'm hoping they can get that out so I can watch it. I'm not one that buys 20 different streaming you know, channels, but I definitely want to watch that one. So we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to hook it up for sure. All right, the next big storyline, I saw it on Sports Collectors Daily. I'll put a link in the video description. Great site for news, different products, um, all sorts of hobby-related content on that site. Great site. Um, but they have an article talking about Dibs, the new platform, the fractional share platform for sports cards and where they're they've differentiated a little bit is there's actually a physical card behind the blockchain digital card so to speak there's actually a 
a physical card attached to it. I have not been on this platform yet. I know that it's limited to you know certain certain number of users. There's a waiting list. I'm not even on the waiting list. I just haven't had time. There's so many different avenues in collectibles right now that I just haven't gotten to dibs. I don't have access to it yet, but interested to kind of see how it, how it does progress. And it recently just got seed funding, $2.8 million from a variety of different investors, including Nat Turner, the new chairman of PSA. Uh, Jeff from Sports Card Investor has also stated he is one of the investors as well. So there is some, some funding behind this platform. I believe it was Evan Vandenberg who started it. Um, and excuse me if I say that name wrong, um, but essentially kind of looking to capitalize on what, what they call kind of outdated service models for people to buy and sell cards. So it's kind of a, it's an alternative to what we've always done, buying online or buying at card shows, you know, buying on eBay, I mean, um, you know, Com C, if you will. You know, so these alternatives are popping up. And like I said, I haven't used the site, so I don't have any opinion on, on dibs, but um, I'm interested to see how these things progress. And just when I see something like that, where there's, you know, some pretty decent funding, you know, that's going into these platforms, it makes me kind of wonder what, where does it go from here? You know, what does it mean for the, for the hobby as a whole? You know, will physical card shows be a thing of the past? Will that be something that, that we just don't do? And I hope that that's not true, because that, that's actually the one thing that I'm looking to do more of are more in-person negotiations and also in-person dealing with, with hobby friends that I've met through this channel and getting back into the hobby about three years ago, a little over three years ago. So I'm hoping to do more face-to-face -face dealings, um, not less. But I do understand kind of for those that are looking to move in and out of positions as far as you know, sports cards, collectibles, I can understand you know, kind of the, the demand for it. It, it. it does, it makes sense to me. And it, it will be interesting to see kind of how it all plays out. All right, and lastly, we'll talk about PSA is expanding its space again, if you can believe that. And the one thing that just kind of strikes me when I hear these types of, of things is we've really been hearing this over the last six, seven months, even before um, Nat Turner and that investment group bought PSA, they were already expanding, they were already hiring and all that. But I was just looking at some of the numbers. Again, this, this um, article was on Sports Collectors Daily. And they've hired more over 250 new employees since October of 2020. 250 employees in about six, seven months. And then they've increased their capacity again here recently, another 58,814 square feet, bringing the total to 184,439 square feet. And I'm just thinking, look, Yes, in the short run, we, we've got some short-term pain, I think, with PSA and their delivery times and their turnaround times. But the way that they're ramping up, it just kind of gives you that feeling that they're going to get it under control. And I understand that they've got, you know, there's, they've stated, I believe, they've, they've acknowledged they've got millions of cards in their backlog. And a lot of it is kind of what we've already talked about. Uh, a lot of channels have talked about it. A lot of hobby people have talked about you have five $10 cards. You're sending in for, you know, grading when grading costs 10, 15, 20 bucks. It's like, hey, why not? You know, if I get a 10, I can sell it for a hundred. You know, so you just have a huge, huge backlog of those types of cards that have really slowed everything down. And now they're slowed down kind of ironically on the other end of that spectrum by Express, Super Express, people that are paying extra, you know, for you know, for those faster turnaround times. So it's probably people are sending in less of the five ten dollar cards but they're probably getting a massive influx of Express Super Express that costs $200, $300 to get graded and they have to prioritize those so they're not able to get to that backlog. And that just kind of continues the, you know, the trend. But 250 people is a lot of people. And I understand that's not necessarily graders, that's not necessarily you know, any one particular person in the company, position in the company, but that is a lot of people. And you have to assume that you know, that um, with the potential of technology, I assume that they're gonna probably invest in technology as well to speed up even just kind of the, not necessarily the grading piece, but just getting cards into the system, you know, to where it's not, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks for your order to get there and then to be inputted into the database and actually become processed. You know, I think all of that, if you kind of look at what they're doing, I, I mean, you get the feeling like, you know, nine months, 12 months from now, there's gonna be a fairly dramatic change. Of course, I'm speculating here. I could be completely wrong. They could still have a massive backlog, but just the way that they're serious about ramping up and investing in that company, 
Um, you know, they, they bought what, you know, they, Nat Turner and that group bought it for almost a billion dollars, but they're not slowing down as far as investment goes. And I think that that was, you know, something that was a big thing for PSA is were they going to be able to spend the money? Were they going to be able to invest in all the new people and all the, all the new technology? Because the cost short term is not just that, that billion dollar valuation, you know, the eight, nine hundred million dollars they paid. They're probably going to drop another fifty, hundred million dollars Again, just throwing around round numbers. I don't, I'm not on the inside by any stretch, but they're going to drop significant money in scaling that business. But I think once they do that, and I also have heard Nat Turner talk about um, other collectible spaces, I think that they're going to position themselves to where they can really move into other things. You know, Collectors Universe also coins and also other things. You know, they actually have a big coin business, from what I understand, um, coin grading and so forth. So, you know, they can get into all sorts of other things. And maybe PSA is looking to be that one-stop shop for collectibles, third-party grading at some point down the line. Maybe that is the big picture vision. That's not anything that I've read, but you can see how, how that would be the case. And I have heard Nat Turner say that they are interested in other spaces, other collectibles. So it'll be really interesting to see, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on any of these subjects. Are you excited about any of this stuff? Are you just kind of blah about it? Was this boring? Was this just a boring video? I hope not. Um, guys, we're kind of putting together some things in the background. I've got my lights. I've ordered more lights. So there's going to be more color, probably the same color, but uh, my daughter did this uh, PFD, the, the little painting right here, if I can do it. Uh, she, she did that for me. That's off of my intro. Um, so, and then I've got, uh, this came from one of my subscribers, Dex Flow. Um, awesome dude. He sent me this and it's actually signed by the creator of the, the Ninja Turtles. It's got a Beckett authentication thing on it as well. Um, and it's Kevin Eastman, I think is, the, is Kevin East, Kevin Eastman, I believe. Uh, the, the Ninja Turtle people are going to really light me up. Uh, but anyway, guys, we always typically end on a positive note with some sort of a positive message. And I think that the big thing is just believe in yourself first. There's a lot of, there's a lot of I think, negativity. And people are, when they're not doing well, they, they bring other people down. It is absolutely critical to stay positive, optimistic, and believe in yourself. Find that confidence any way you can find it and then just build on it. And even if it's a slow build, slowly kind of make those like, you know, those baby steps to get better every single day. That's what I'm trying to do every single day. Um, I'm, I'm trying to improve in one way or another in my life, whether it be professionally, personally, fitness, diet, or whatever it is, I'm working on trying to get better at it. And some days are better than others, frankly. Some days are awful and sometimes I fail, just fail hard. Um, so, but that is all part of the process and part of kind of the enjoyment of, you know, getting to those goals. It's not all about just the final goal. It's about getting to it and enjoying the process of step-by-step step, building it one brick at a time because then you really appreciate it because you really journeyed to get it. It wasn't just handed to you. You had to journey and you had to battle and you had to do it yourself. And there's nothing that can replace that. Nothing. So guys, have an awesome Tuesday. I hope that you have a great week ahead and I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.